Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with Cool Guys. Welcome back to another episode of Jeepin' with Cool Guy. This is a project that I've been dreading for a little while. If you've seen my video on testing out the speedometer, fuel gauge, temp gauge on the CJ7, CJ5, 76 to 86, you'll know that one of the complications that I have is I'm pretty sure I've got a bad sending unit. Pretty much did on arrival. The problem with that is, is that I've got this whole thing put back together. I've already put like a thousand miles on it. Everything's working except for the fuel gauge. I've already tested it all the way back to the fuel sending unit, getting signal, everything seems to be reading out. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to drop the tank. In the process of restoring this CJ7, I've tried to make this thing as concourse as possible. Concourse meaning that it is as accurate to how it rolled off the showroom floor the way that AMC built this. I did make a couple modifications and I don't know if you can truly call them modifications. One being that I put the 20 gallon poly gas tank in this CJ7. CJ7, CJ5s from 76 to 84, 83 only came with the 15 gallon gas tank. In 84 to 86, you could get the 20 gallon plastic poly gas tank in it. I found one locally for a super dirt cheap price and I put it in here. Why not? These things already get 10 miles per gallon, so why not have 20 gallons to burn? This primarily applies to the 15 gallon gas tank the same way. It's almost, it's the exact same mounting bolts, it's the exact same fuel filler lines uh, and backfiller lines to the gas cap, um, and then the wiring is basically the same. The only thing that's different about it is it's got a deeper set, so the gas tank skid plate sits a little bit deeper underneath the Jeep. Other than that, that's about it. So let's get to it. Let's go see how much fun this is going to be. Let me preface before we get into the nitty gritty that I'm going to try my best to shoot the angles and give you a perspective as to where we're going and what to look for. But we're basically under the vehicle and it's kind of hard to get those. We are in the back wheel well behind the rear baffle and in front of the brake light housing inside of the body cavity. For the individuals that have the 15 gallon gas tank, so basically 76 through 83, you will have two check valves mounted to the rear of this baffle. A lot of individuals remove them because what they are is they're actual rollover check valves and liquid check valves that is built into the 20 gallon gas tank. So if you have an 84 through 86 with the 20 gallon gas tank, you more than likely will not have both of these. Did a little adjustment real quick. This hose had fallen off. Actually, there it goes. And that is one of the hoses that you want to remove. The other two are on the bottom of the liquid check valve. There's two of them here that go over to the vents on the gas tank. These were originally held on with little tiny metal hose clamps. I'm going to remove those real quick and then remove the three different hoses. One piece of advice before you do this, your liquid check valve, the brown one over here, is plastic. That's metal. These have a tendency of rusting out, so be very careful when you remove the hose because you don't want to break off the nozzle. And again, these are plastic, so you want to be very careful when you're removing the fuel line or the vapor line from your liquid check valve because you could easily break those posts off too. Neither one of these you can find in aftermarket. Nobody makes them. You would have to find an original. Okay. So I've removed those two holes. You can see those two plastic nozzles at the bottom of your liquid check valve. And we removed the hose from the rollover check valve. There is one hose that runs from the rollover check valve to the top of the liquid check valve. You do not need to remove that. These things do not need to come out. Next, we want to disconnect the fuel sending unit wire. You want to open up your wire harness that comes down through the wheel well and look for the pink wire. 
for the early CJ7s, CJ5s, this is a plastic female to male adapter. For the later, I want to say 82 to 86, this is actually a rubber plug. So just disconnect that wire. Oh, oh check that out. Got some uh, fuel coming out of the rollover check valve. Uh, keep a towel next to you because you don't want fuel leaking out all over the place. Now that you've got your fuel sending unit wire disconnected and your rollover check valve and liquid check valve hoses disconnected, let's move over to the fuel filler hoses. We have now moved over to the passenger side to the fuel filler hose and the overflow or backflow hose. That's these two hoses right here. They have a hose clamp that goes on the fuel filler housing and then there's also a hose clamp that connects these hoses to the gas tank. Sorry about the lighting but I at least wanted to show you what they look like. These are almost identical to the way that the 15 gallon gas tank hooks up. There's just a slight difference in the separation and the size of the hoses. So when you order your fuel filler hose and return hose line make sure that you get the right gas tank size all right got the hose clamps and the hoses removed and i'd be lying if i didn't say that this was obnoxious the reason it was obnoxious is because when i installed the hose clamps before i put the body on when it was still a rolling chassis i didn't take in consideration the angle that i would have to be able to get the hose clamps off so with these hose clamps, little screw that they screw on with, I had to really kind of finagle a way to get these things loosened up. So when I put this back in, I'm going to be much more conscious of the angle at which these screws are applied so that hopefully, never have to do this again, but if I do have to do it again, I can easily access those. I'm on the passenger side behind the, the passenger side wheel. There are five bolts that adhere the skid plate for the gas tank to the frame, cross member in the back. The one that's in the middle there is actually the tank strap. So you do not have to unscrew that one. It's uh, that one right there. These are pretty much carriage head bolts, meaning that they have a square head to them and they sit right down into the cross member. I have put nylon lock nuts on the end of these bolts. To take out the 20 gallon gas tank, there's a very little wriggle room to get this thing out. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to get a floor jack and I'm gonna put it underneath the skid plate, right down here. And then I'm gonna unfasten these five bolts in the back. Now there's three that connect the front part of the skid plate to the inner cross member above the axle. Let's take a look at those real quick. Okay, so I'm moving up underneath the skid plate. There's the AMC 20 rear differential cover. And up above there on that cross member, you can see two of the three screws, bolts, that connect the skid plate to that cross member. I am going to remove those last. The one thing I do want to point out to you is how little room you have between the differential cover and the skid plate. It's what, three quarters of an inch there? So you're not going to be able to jockey this thing around a whole lot. The reason I'm bringing this up is because on the sides of the skid plate, and this is a really hard angle, so let me show you what I'm looking at. So that's the, the the tire carrier this is the rear tow bar draw bar and up underneath there is a flange that comes out of the side of the skid plate you'll notice that right here the shackle that flange is above the shackle i'm not going to be able to just drop this thing out here because that flange is going to connect on the shackle and I don't want to take the shackle hanger out. What I did notice is if you flip over to the other side, I am now on the driver's side of the skid plate, 
there is no flange. So I've got about three quarters of an inch between the skid plate and the shackle hanger bolt that I can shift the skid plate and fuel tank once I've removed those, those bolt fasteners over this way so that hopefully or the flange will have clearance on the passenger side. Again, this is only for the 20 gallon gas tank for the 84 through 86. If you have the 15 gallon gas tank, and we'll quickly switch over to my 84, which ironically enough has the 15 gallon gas tank and the 79 has the 20 gallon gas tank. By God's. You'll notice that there is no problem with the flange underneath the gas tank or the skid plate and the 15 gallon gas tank and skid plate on the 84 will just drop right out. That was some uh, difficult explaining and visualizations. So th the point of all this is that once you get underneath and look at uh, what you've got in the back of your CJ578, you're going to see all these things that I'm talking about and it'll make a lot more sense. So for right now, I'm going to go and unbolt the, I guess it's eight total bolts. The carriage bolts back here, the lock nuts are half inch. Whether well, they're nylon lock nuts or regular nuts. And the bolts that, the carriage bolts that hold these in are quarter inch carriage bolts. I'm going to remove those real quick, but first I'm going to put a floor jack and support the skid plate so that as I drop this thing out, it just doesn't fall and bend everything up. All right, got the floor jack in there. I've got a piece of, uh, I want to say six by six by half inch wood, to kind of give it a little bit more of a flatter surface. And I've put it right in the middle of the skid plate. I should have prefaced this whole video with, you're gonna have an easier time with this if you run your Jeep out of gas. Because the last thing you want to do is to drop a 20 gallon gas tank that has 18 gallons of gas sitting in it or a 15 gallon gas tank that has 10 gallons of gas in it. That's going to make it a lot more awkward and it's going to weigh a heck of a lot more. So if you can get this thing down to fumes, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Words of wisdom. A little too late. Got all the nuts removed. This drawbar makes it a lot more difficult than it really needs to be. Now before I use the floor jack to lower this thing. Go through and make sure that you've got everything disconnected. And also keep in mind that you have a limited amount of hose reach on the top of the gas tank from the actual fuel line up to the engine, the return line and the vapor return line, all those go back to the top of your gas tank, whether it be 20 or 15 gallons. So you want to make sure that you've got enough support underneath here to where you're only going to drop it down three or four inches so that you can see above the, the gas tank uh, to see how much line you have. Otherwise, you're just going to kind of rip everything out and that would not be good. So what I'm challenged with right now is trying to figure out how I can drop this thing out with these bolts in place and get the right angle. So I'm going to kind of work through this. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to hear, but that was actually just the metal, the skid plate sliding down the threads of the bolts. Okay, so that's not too bad. What I don't like is the angle that this thing is dropping at. So it's going down that way. I don't want it to go down that way. I want it to go down level. So do a little bit of checking on some stuff here. Well, having gone around and checked clearance on everything, the front part of the skid plate is unattached. There's a flange that the bolts go through on the back of the skid plate and this one point here on the driver's side is catching on the drawbar. This, this side over here has clearance. It's already been angled in, so I should be good there. So I'm just going to try and lightly drop this thing down, 
try and maneuver it back and forth to where I can get it around <laughs> around that. Okay, well, I guess we're kind of already into it. As of right now, the only thing that is still partially connected is, like I thought, this flange over here on this shackle hanger on the passenger side. Maybe I can slide it using the jack. Okay, I can definitely hear the gasoline slosh around in there. Let me take a commercial break to see if I can get this shored up a little bit better. Okay, I just used my drill as the, uh, <laughs> the support, the jack stand. That's probably not the best way to go about doing it. All right, I'm gonna try and see if I can find another way of reinforcing this. All right, hopefully this lighting's a little bit better. Might be a little bright for me. Once you get this dropped down to a certain level, you can look in from the side. And then from the driver's side, that's where you can reach in with a pair of needle nose pliers and undo the hose clamps that connect the nickel copper fuel lines to the hose lines that actually run to the sending unit or the vent valves. All right, so I'm just going to lightly drop this thing down. Easy does it. Okay, and there's probably a couple gallons in there. It really is amazing how just a few gallons can make this thing slosh around a lot and really throw off the balance. Okay, now that I've got this dropped down to a fairly decent level, you can see here's the sending unit. If you can, pull those two hoses that came off of that liquid check valve off of the frame and through into your tank so it doesn't get caught when you drop this thing down. So as for right now, I'm looking up underneath here and I've got plenty of length in these hoses for the sending unit to be able to drop this thing all the way down to the floor. Even though I have enough hose, I'm going to take off these hose clamps and these hoses right now so that there's actually nothing on the fuel tank that's connected to the body or any of the hoses. That way I have no concerns of getting anything caught. Just so you know, didn't even think about it, the larger fuel line hose is your feed line. So there's going to still be gasoline sitting in that. I pulled that thing off and it ran all across the back. So great, whatever. I disconnected the sending unit, disconnected the ground line. So I should be completely disconnected. So I'm just gonna slide this out nice and easy. Check out. And we are Let's move this into a spot where we can actually see what we're doing. For the 20 gallon gas tank, there is this plastic nut that holds it in. When you initially take this off first time, this is really hard to get off. What I would suggest doing is taking a screwdriver, a blunt screwdriver, make sure that it's shaved off like this. See, I've taken the whole head of that thing off and then just notch it into one of the end, the corners and just slowly pop it off. And then work it around so you do one edge and then if you can, go to the opposite edge. And that it will eventually release. Obviously, mine has been done before so it came off very easily. So that's your big lock nut. Problem with these things is, I guess you can get replacements for these but they're not the right thread count um, from what I've gathered, at least in the reviews. So be very careful with this. Pull out your sending unit. Try not to inhale too many gas fumes. Realize that the, the plastic float is down there below. And there's your sending unit. I'm gonna cap this thing off here real quick because I'm starting to see purple monkeys kind of run across the garage here. All right, that's better. I would not recommend doing this while smoking or around anything where there's a potential for a spark or a flame. Well, I went back and I double checked everything. I tested out the sending unit. It's really not that hard. You just put on a lowest ohm rating, 
connect one post to positive, the other post to the negative, and you get your arm ring. The ascending unit checks out. This is the thing that really pisses me off, my ground line. I had tested it, I thought it was good. Apparently I wasn't testing it in the right way because I took the ground line off of the body just to kind of test it out. And there was no connectivity between the two ends, zero. So I guess the whole inside of that old wire had oxidized so much that there was no connectivity. So what that tells me is if you watch the video on the fuel gauge and the temp gauge is that your ground line it seems to always be the ground line. All this works out, which is really kind of a bummer because I now have an extra sending unit. Drop this whole thing out and all it was was my ground line. So now we're just going to go back and reinstall it. Let's test out our new sending unit just to make sure that we're good. The ohm ratings for these sending units are supposed to be 10 on full and 70 on empty. All you need is a voltmeter, put it on the lowest ohm setting, get a couple of gator clips, connect the black to the ground post on the sending unit, connect the positive to the sending unit post, and then just simply move the arm back and forth nice and easy. So if we go all the way to full, it makes contact with this post over here, it's about at 9. Now if I move it back the other direction, as it empties out, we get to about 80. This checks out. We're good. So you want to take your filter and put it on the nozzle end of the tube as far up as you can go. Take your cap off. On the inside of this should be a round O-ring. And there's a groove in the, the base of this opening where that o-ring sits. Put the float down in, follow it with your filter. There should be two tabs on the inside of the lip of your sending unit. And those two tabs go down into these two grooves that are cut into the tank. Well apparently, I need to slide that filter on farther because it's bottoming out. Alright, finally got it seated. But there's a complication here, and I found this on the Crown one too, that these, the filters that you, they put on the end, they only go on so far, like that far onto the tube, and they wind up bo bottoming out on the bottom of the tank. And this has just been my experience with this 20 gallon tank, I didn't have it with the uh, 15 gallon tank, it's just something to do with these 20 gallon two-year tank offerings from AMC that the sending units, the filter, seems to be about an inch and a half too long. I had to take a pipe cutter and cut that amount off of the fuel feed tube just to be able to get it to fit. Once you got that in, then just take your cap and screw it down. Go as tight as your fingers slash hands can get it on there. In the previous video where I was testing out the fuel gauge, temp gauge, grounding issues, the mistake that I made was that I was testing the ground of the, the uh, sending unit ground wire at the screw to other parts of the frame, not the actual end connection of the ground line to the sending unit, which kind of made sense at the time, but all I was doing was testing whether this screw was grounded to other parts on the frame, which inherently it would be. I was not actually testing the, the wire itself. All right, got the tank positioned underneath the back of the CJ. I'm going to put on the sending unit wire and the ground wire. I would recommend using some dielectric grease on those connections just to make sure that they stay uncorroded and you have a good connection for many years to come. Go ahead and apply the sending unit wire to that post. Make sure you've got a good thread on it that's not loose. Same with the ground wire. 
make sure that that's solid. Good to go. Then take your fuel return line, which is the smaller of the two, apply that to that hose nozzle, and then take your main fuel line, put a golf tee in there to keep it from leaking all over the place, and apply that to the larger of the two tubes coming out of the sending unit. Let's see if I can do this without having it leaking all over the place. Nope, it can leak all over the place. All right, now that we've got the hose clamps in place, now we can get the jack up underneath this and raise it up into the vehicle. Now the difficulty is getting it in between two shackle hangers and leaf springs with those two metal flanges that stick out. So I'm gonna just kind of slowly jockey this thing up, rotate it a little bit as I go along. Ow, there we go. <laughs> uh, wear gloves. There we go. This back mount flange is going to catch on the tow bar. You're going to have to rotate it in just enough to get that edge by there. We're at the point where we need to get the these back mounting bolts perfectly lined up with these holes in the skid plate because if you push the carriage bolts up into this back cross member, the two of them you can't even get to. And then you're gonna have to drop the tank back out again and that's gonna be a pain in the butt. All right, now that I've got this position, grab a pair of needle nose pliers and pull those bolts down into those holes. And once you get the two outer ones, which are the harder ones to get to when you have the draw bar on, then you can take your lock nut or whatever nut you have you put on, putting on here and start that on. This one on the driver's side happens to be the most difficult one to do just because of the angle with the draw bar. All right, now that I've got this bolt, I haven't drawn it all the way up. I want to have a little bit of play so that I can adjust these other bolts as I go along. Now that I've got these two outer bolts drawn in, but not snug, I still got plenty of play here. You need to go in and mount the three inner bolts and get those all aligned because the last thing you want to do is get these all nice and snugged up and then the three bolts in the front don't line up. So I'm going to crawl underneath there and mount those three bolts. There's no real torque specs that I have found for these. Just snug them up really nice and tight. Uh, and that's also why I'm using lock nuts, nylon lock nuts on this stuff so it doesn't come loose. But for the most part, just get the, uh, the last three nuts onto these bolts and drop your jack out. Before you finalize all this, look in from the side and just move the hoses around a little bit just to make sure that they're not crimped in between anything. You need to connect your liquid check valve and your rollover check valve hoses. They go back on exactly the same way you took them off. Make sure you uh, reconnect your fuel sending unit wire, the pink wire that runs through the back. Almost forgot. Don't forget to rehook up your fuel filler hose and the overflow hose. That wouldn't be good. Moment of truth. This is stressful. If you watch the other video about testing out the fuel gauge and the temp gauge, I run all of those tests through this gauge and as I had mentioned before thought that I had tested out the ground line so now I put probably five gallons back in that I drained out of the tank and I want to see what happens if I turn the key oh yeah look at that that is really cool now there's not a lot of gas in there and that's Perfect. So now I have a working temp gauge, I have a working fuel gauge, and it was the ground wire that was wind up screwing me up. All right, peeps, that concludes another episode of Jeep with Cool Guy. Let's recap what we did. We replaced the fuel sending unit of a 20 gallon gas tank, which is normally on an 84 to 86 CJ7. And to do that, we dropped the tank out of the back, unhooked all the hoses, put in the new sending unit, and then also the 
The difference is between the 76 to 83 CJ7, CJ5s, and the 84 to 86 CJ7s with the 20 gallon gas tank. So like what I had said before, this was one of the very few modifications that I made to this 79. I consider it perfectly fine because it's still CJ7 AMC equipment. It's just a little bit different as far as the year goes. So when you're, if you have to replace your fuel sending unit, trying to test out whether your fuel gauge works, <laughs> make sure that you test the ground line and make sure that you test it the right way as we talked about earlier on in the video. This whole thing could have been heck of a lot easier if I had properly checked that ground line. But okay, this was a great learning experience. And last but not least, and the most important thing of all of it, like and subscribe. It just makes me feel better about myself.